Greetings everybody, so today we're going to be taking a look at the 2021 Methods Exam 2. Uh, specifically question 3 from Extended Response. Um, I picked this one out because I thought it was quite a nice question, uh, quite interesting as well uh, towards the end here. Um, but yeah, obviously I don't have the actual test paper um, or copy of that with me. Um, so if you do have your hands on the PDF copy, um, please put that in the comments below, put a link somewhere. Um, so if I do decide to make more videos, then I don't have to spend 10 minutes typing this out. But yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Um, we will be using the CAS programs though, because this is a very nice question for CAS programs. So question three, let Q of X be equal to this logarithmic mess. So what if we have a function, uh, always define it on your CAS, so define a Q of X to be equal to, we have the log, um, or natural log ln of X squared, minus 1 and minus um, the natural log of 1 minus x. So we define Q of x, question A, um, state the domain. So we can get that by doing the domain Q of x comma x on the cas, and that's minus infinity to 1. So that means we can say, well, the domain is x elements, the interval minus infinity to, that's negative 1. Okay, and how about the range? Well, unfortunately, you can't quite get the range on the CAS. What you can do, though, is just take a quick peek at the graph. So, put an our here. And as you can see, um, it extends infinitely downwards. Of course, it cuts off a bit over here, but that's just because of the resolution. Uh, and it keeps going up to infinity. Um, it keeps going up to infinity mainly because of this second logarithm. Um, yeah, 1 minus x. So it's just some kind of reflection. And on this interval, the domain of, sorry, the range of that second log is um, the real numbers. So what we can say is the range is, let's write it as Q of X, and this is on the interval, yeah, just the real numbers, or minus infinity to infinity. So question B, find the equation of the tangent to the graph of Q when X equals minus two. Now, when, uh, yeah, during reading time, what I would pick up as well is the second part of part B, which is find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the graph of Q when X equals minus 2, which is at the exact same point. So that's the normal line. So if you asked about the tangent line and the normal line, what better program to use than the function lines programs? You can use the tangent and normal line program separately, but function line just gets it all done in one go. So we're going to put in Q of X, comma the variable, comma the point, which is minus two. And tangent line is, oops, it's Y equals minus X minus two. And the normal line is Y equals X plus two. And I don't know why they say passes through the points minus two, comma zero. Um, but yeah, this is, this is obvious if you graph out X plus two. Okay, so let P of X be equal to um, this, another exponential mass over here. So we're going to define P of X to be equal to the exponential of minus two X. And then we have a minus two times the exponential of minus X. And then we have a plus one. So we define it, explain why P is not a one-to-one -one function. Um, let's take a peek at the graph again. So doc for four to insert a graphs page. Um, and we're going to put in P of X. Well, it's clearly not one-to-one. -one. It's because it fails the, what's it called? The horizontal line test. So it's only one-to-one -one if it passes both horizontal and vertical line tests. Um, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test because we have a local min here. Um, so we can also check where the local min is by using the analyze program. Uh, looks like it's at zero, but we can put in P of X comma X into the analyze. I uh, don't need a domain. And you can see stationary point and local min at zero, zero. So it's not one-to-one -one because we have local min at zero comma zero. Um, hence, fails um, horizontal line test. Cool. So find the gradient of the tangent to the graph of P at X equals A. I should really improve my handwriting as well. I think it's because it's so zoomed out, so I have to be a bit careful. But yeah, find the 
gradient of the tangent to the graph of p at x equals a. So that's exactly the derivative of p, but evaluated at a. So we can go to a cos, shift to minus, derivative uh, with respect to x of p of x, and such that x equals a. That should not be capital, but it doesn't really matter. And we get 2 e to the minus a minus 2 e to the minus 2a. The diagram below shows the graph of p and line x plus 2. So this is p of x and this is x plus 2. The line y equals x plus 2 and the tangent to the graph of p at x equals a, so some point a, um, intersects with an acute angle of theta between them. Okay, so we could imagine some, maybe let's pick this point over here, um, that's just some random a, and we draw a tangent here, that's not a very nice line, but it intersects with an acute angle of theta between that red line and the line x, uh, x plus 2. And we want to find the values of a for which theta is equal to 60. So we want to make this angle here 60. And we want to find the a values, so the a values are down here, for which this would occur. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what does it mean for this theta to be equal to 60? We know the, um, the gradient of this line, well not the gradient, the angle it makes with the positive x-axis is 45 degrees. Um, so if theta is equal to 60, then we are after straight lines. So if this is 60 over here, that are not at an angle of minus 15 degrees with the positive x-axis. So you can figure that out by doing 45 degrees and minus 60 degrees to get this minus 15. But that's not the only possible case. You could also have a line that looks something like this. 60 degrees and this line if you do 45 plus 60 you get 105 degrees now obviously the second line i drew is not a tangent line so maybe we have to move it up a bit more maybe to around not too sure where it would be but i'm guessing 105 degrees make it look something like that maybe i'll use a rule actually that's going to make it a bit nicer for you guys yeah so something something like that so that's going to be an angle of 60 right over here. Okay, so these are the two lines we're after. Um, okay, so we want to find the points on our P of X such that the tangents have these specific angles. So this angle here, that was supposed to be 105 degrees. Now the problem is we have um, angles over here and angles and differential calculus don't really mix too well. So instead of considering the angles of these lines, it's better to consider the gradients of these lines. So let's try to do that. So first of all, for this minus 15 degree angle, let's convert that to radians first, just so we can, um, yeah, because our calculator is on radian mode. So minus 15, that's not the minus I'm after, this minus. Uh, to convert to radians, we divide by, um, sorry, we divide by 180 and we multiply by pi. So this is the angle in radians. And for the second guy, 105, we divide by 180 times by pi. So this is the angle in radians of the second line. Okay, and now we want to convert these to gradients. So how to convert angles to gradients? Just take the tangents. So the tangent of the first angle is root 3 minus 2, and the tangent of the second angle is going to be minus root 3 plus 2. Okay, now what we can do now is we want to find where our derivative is equal to these values, and then we're basically done. So we're going to solve for when the derivative, so let's do something like shift to minus, the derivative of p of x. Um, and we want this derivative to be equal to, let's say, the first gradient, comma x. Um, I believe this is two decimal places, so let's, instead of doing that, let's approximate it. And we're going to solve where the derivative, so again, shift, oh, actually, what we can do we can just take this guy, get rid of this, 
and then plug in the second gradient. And let's approximate once again. Okay, so we get to these two x values. Um, yeah, here it's just a label of A, but that doesn't really matter. So what we can write is, yeah, the gradient of the first line is, what is it? It is... root 3 minus 2. So what, what we're essentially doing is we are letting p prime of a, because they, they're using a in this case, so we might as well use a, to be equal to root 3 minus 2. And this tells us that a must be equal to minus 0 0.11. Um, yeah, two decimal places. And we're going to also let p prime of a be equal to minus root 3 minus 2. And what does this tell us? It tells us that a must be equal to minus 0 0.67. And those are our two answers. And also, since it's three marks, I should probably also write down how we got to these gradients. Um, I'm not going to write it here because I don't have enough space. But yeah, just take these angles and do the conversion to radians or something like that and take the tangents. Okay, find the x-coordinate of the point of intersection uh, between the line y equals x plus 2 in the graph of p. So that's uh, this point right over here. And hence find the area bounded by y equals x plus 2, the graph of p, and the x-axis. So the area we're after, let me actually erase all this stuff because it's getting in the way a little bit. What we're actually after is the area of this region. So if you read the question, um, we are after the area bounded by y equals x plus 2, which is this part, the graph of p, which is this part, and the x-axis, which is down here. So we're after this region. And to find what the area of that region is, well, you better know what this point is, so you can kind of separate out the integrals. Um, so what you would write is, let's just call that point Oh, we need to find that point first. So that's not too tricky to do. We can just simply solve where p of x is equal to x plus 2 with respect to x. And we get minus 0 0.75. And this is correct to three decimal places. So we can say intersection point. How do we get the intersection points? Let x plus 2 be equal to p of x. And uh, what this tells us is that x equals minus 0 0.750. Okay, so the area now is equal to the integral. Now we need to split up that integral, like so. We first go from minus 2. Um, you can get minus 2 by, yeah, this line x plus 2 obviously passes through that point. Um, so minus 2 up to the minus 0 0.750 of x plus 2 integrated with respect to x and then plus the integral from minus 0 0.750 all the way up to the origin, which is 0, because that's where um, the graph touches the x-axis of p of x dx. Okay, we'll just plug this into our calculator. And so we'll get, so shift plus to get the integral from minus 2 up to minus 0 0.750 of x plus 2 dx. And then plus, shift plus, the integral from minus 0 0.750 all the way up to 0 of p of x integrated with respect to x. And we've got 1.03. So correct the three decimal places, so this is equal to 1.038, and that's the final answer. So that's all for this question. Quite a nice question. Um, don't think it took me too long to do, maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, that's all for this video. Let me know if you want to see more, or you can just wait for Worms Math Academy to upload the um, rest of the solutions to this exam. Um, so yeah. Good luck for all your other exams if you're watching this during exam.